Hi folks, David Letterman here, and uh, this pre-calculus lesson talks about critical points and extrema. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. Um, okay, so uh, let's do the board problem first. Determine whether the function is continuous at the given x value on this piecewise function right there. So it looks like i got to plug in x equals 2. I just got to verify that they're equal to the same right there. Describe the end behavior of this polynomial. And then graph this guy. Okay, that's easy enough. Okay, let's deal with this guy first, okay? So, is it um, continuous? Well, plug in x equals 2 right here. You get 8. Plug in x equals 2. You get 2 squared plus 4 is, is 8 again. And you find out that it, uh, it, it, it gets close to 8 on both sides when x equals 2. So, yes, it is continuous, you guys. So, that's from the last lesson. So, describe the end behavior. Okay, so all i got to know is what's the, the degree of this polynomial? It's even. Okay, so that means it's either going to be a touchdown or an upside down touchdown. In this sense, that's negative. It's an upside down touchdown. So as x goes to negative infinity and positive infinity, f of x is always going to an upside down touchdown, which is negative infinity. So your y always goes down. So it's doing some graph like this. It could go up and go up, down, up, and then down again. So that's how it goes. Or it could just be one like that okay but it's always it starts at the bottom over here and ends at the bottom over here all right uh, and then finally uh, graph this guy remember y equals x squared would be a parabola right here y equals x squared this says move it to the left three and up one so move that parabola to the left three up one there it is okay determine on which intervals it's increasing and decreasing this guy is decreasing uh, when x is less than negative three and it's increasing when x is greater than negative 3. All right, so, so critical points in extrema. So definitions, concavity uh, uh, is the curvature of a polygonal function. So sometimes it curves like this. This would be called concave up. And notice it's decreasing from left to right, so it's concave up but decreasing. Here's a concave up and increasing. Okay, here's a concave down. You see how the curvature is going down? and it's increasing concave and so when you're going from left to the right it's increasing okay here's a concave down decreasing okay basically concavity means if it's concave up I can put water in here and it might hold water but this guy if I put water in here it won't hold water that's that's what my calculus teacher told me is concave up holds water concave down does not hold water All right. Okay, so critical points are those points on a graph where a tangent line to the curve is horizontal or, or vertical. And you're thinking, what? That's not what I taught you. Uh, I'll show you in a picture right here. It can be a maximum. Uh, your critical can be where a maximum is or a minimum is, or it could be where a point of inflection is. And a point of inflection is where your graph changes from concave up to concave down, or when it changes from concave down to concave up. It's a point of inflection. For example, look, you guys, can you see? This guy has a maximum right here, so this critical is a maximum. Can you see this critical right here is a minimum right here? So this is where this tangent line stuff, a tangent line to the curve is horizontal. There's a tangent line that's horizontal. There's a tangent line that's horizontal. When the concavity changes from concave up to concave down right there, the tangent line is vertical. So where it changes concavity is a point of inflection also. Notice this is increasing no matter what. So you got to check uh, if it's increasing no matter what, then um, uh, then it's going to be a point of inflection right there. Or if it's decreasing no matter what, it's a point of inflection. Okay, you can also have absolute maximums or absolute minimums or relative mins or relative maxes. Okay, take this graph for example. Can you see this is as far down as the graph goes? That's why it's called an absolute minimum. This one goes down, but it's not the farthest down, but it's called a relative minimum right here. This is a relative max because it's not the highest it goes. These arrows say it goes up to infinity. So the relative max is right here. This is an absolute minimum. This is a relative min. Over here, here's an absolute maximum. Okay? Okay, all of these are called extremas. So are PIs, points of inflection. They're called extremas also. So name and classify the extremas. Okay, so this guy right here. Okay, so the extremas are, I have an absolute min right there, an absolute min right there, and I have a relative max right there because it goes up forever over here and forever on the other side. So there's the answer to that one. Okay, how about this one? Uh, use your graphing calculator, plug this guy in. So plug in uh, y equals, in the top left-hand corner, y equals x cubed minus 8x plus 3. You might have to hit zoom fit, which I think is zoom 0. Okay, so you should get a graph that looks like that. Okay. 
and then if you're not getting it, go ahead and hit your uh, window, which is still up in the, in the right next to the Y equals button, and then make your X scale negative 5 to 5 and scale of 1. Make your Y scale negative 10 to 15 and a scale of 5. Okay, so this would be negative 5, negative 10. This would be 5, 10, 15. Okay, and since these scales are 1, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so the scales are your tick marks on your graph. All right, so that tells me that I have the relative max at about, and you can use your trace feature. See the trace feature, that top right-hand button? Not the top right right-hand button, but next to it. Okay, hit your trace feature and you can find out your x value right there to be negative 1.63 and your x value over here to be a positive 1.63. So you have a relative max right there and a relative min right there hitting your trace feature. Okay, so the function f of x is 2x to the fifth minus 5x to the fourth minus 10x squared cubed has critical points at x equal negative 1, 0, and 3. So we want to determine whether these are uh, local maxes, mins, or points of inflections. So I'm going to show you a different way than the book does. Go ahead and put uh, on a number line those criticals right there. And I'm going to plug in negative 1 into this function right here, 0 into this function, and 3 into this function. But I'm also going to test a number in this region. I'll probably test negative 2. I'll test a number in this region between negative 1 and 0. So I'll test a half, negative a half, sorry. I'll test probably 1 here and probably 4 over here. Test a region. We want to know what's the y values, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to test x equal negative 2. I'm going to plug in negative 2 right here. I'm going to plug in negative 1, negative 0.5, 0. I'm going to plug in all these numbers into this function right here. And I've done that already. And I got all of those numbers right here. Those are the y values. Those are f of x equals y. y equals all of these. So check this out. y is down here at negative 64. Then it goes up to 3. Then it goes back down to 0.875. So can you see this is going to be a relative maximum right here. Okay, that's a maximum right there. And it goes to uh, 0.875, so it's decreasing from 3 to 0.875. This is 0, so it's still decreasing. It's still decreasing. This is negative 13, so it's still decreasing, decreasing. So this must be a point of inflection because it didn't increase back up. Okay, so it still decreases. It goes down to negative 189, but all of a sudden on this side it starts going back up. So this must be a relative min right here. Okay, so you get a PI, a max at negative 1, a PI at 0, and a minimum at x equals 3. Okay, so this is example 4 on page 175. A small business owner employing 15 people hires an analysis to help the business maximize profits. The analysis gathers data and develops a mathematical model. P of x equals one-third uh, x uh, cubed minus 34x squared plus 1,012x. In this model, P is the owner's monthly profits in dollars, and X is the number of employees. She found out, or the analysis found out, that the, the, the critical, there's critical points at X equals 22 and X equals 46. So determine if any of these are a maximum, and what does the critical point suggest to the owner about the business operations, and what are the risks involved in the analysis recommendations? Well, let's first check out uh, the criticals, okay? So I'm going to plug in 22 and 46. And I get those two numbers. When I plugged in 22 and 46, I get these two numbers. I'm going to test a number over here, like 0. 0 is easy. Test a number in here. I'm going to test a number that's divisible by 3 because uh, uh, the 1 third. So I'm going to test 30. Test a number over here that's divisible by 3. I think I chose 60 because that's divisible by 3. And I just want to see what's my x values or my, what's my y values when I plug in these numbers right here. So let's do it again. It goes from 0 up to 9,000 something. Then it goes down to 8,000 something. So right here, this is a, a maximum. It goes from here, goes up, and it starts going back down. This is 7,000, so it's still going down. Then it goes back up. This is a minimum right here. So that tells me I got a max at x equal 22 and a min at x equals 46. So determine if any of these criticals is a maximum. Yes, x equals 22 is a maximum. What does this critical point suggest to the owner? The profit uh, will be at a maximum when the owner employs 22 people. So the owner should expand, uh, increasing in the number of employees from 15 to 22. And what, and what kind of cautions? Well, you can't hire some kind of blockheads, you guys. You've got to hire somebody that's going to be a good, qualified employee. Otherwise, it wouldn't be profitable.